Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay, number one on the sheet is really number one and two. We're going to do something very, very profound from Rav Hutner. <clears throat> we'll start off with um, the psukim that apply. Vayomer im shama tishma lekolo Hashem elokecha. If you listen to everything Hashem does, this is from the parsha. Uh, I just want to get to the end of the pasuk. Ve'enav You listen to his mitzvah. Shamarta kol chukav. Well, amacha. Now listen to kol ham. If you if we listen to the Torah properly, completely, kol hamachla asher samti b'mitzrayim. All the illness that is in Egypt was in Egypt. Lo asim alecha. You will not. Have ki ani Hashem rofecha. This is a famous pasuk. Ani Hashem rofecha. Kodesh Bor, who is the ultimate doctor. We spoke in our halachas here last week about um, alternative medicine and seeing doctors. And there's a mitzvah to see a doctor to go to the doctors, right? Um, but the the important thing here that we want to emphasize is that for some reason the Torah promises us that all the machla, the illness that was in Mitzrayim, I will not put on you. So we'll come back to that, that Pasuk soon. And let's look at what Rav Hutner has to say. And he points out something very strange and unique in the Shemona Esrei, which we say every day. In the bracha of Rifa'enu, the bracha that we recognize that a Kodesh Baruch Hu is Rofei Kol Basar, that he is the healer. Shel Shmona Esrei, Hamad Beyahu, the text, Hilatenu Ata, because you are our source of praise, right? The Tzorach Biur, he has a simple question. Halo Hanimu Kazeh, this idea that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the source of our praise, we're always praising him. Shel Kiti Hilatenu Ata, Shayahu Lekol Hapakashot. This could apply to every single one of the Brachas in Shmon Esrei. Why Dafka in the Bracha of Rafua? Right? Vilama Nityachid Hu Dafka Lebakashat HaRafua. Why do we throw this into the Bracha of Rafua that a Kodesh Borhu heals us? He's our praise. He he builds. He's going to build Yerushalayim. Ki he tilatenu. He blesses us with all the seasons of the years because he's our praise. Why, Dafka, here in the bracha of Rafua, do we say we praise him? Okay. Okay, let's go into what he wants to say. <clears throat> the opinion of the Maral is when we sit at the Seder night and we tell over the story of the Exodus, Sipur Shvachav Shalomakom. This is not praising God. Why not? El Sipur Tovotav. We're telling over the greatness of God, the goodness of God, the good things that He that He He does. Shalmokom. Umase Chasadavimanu and His acts of Chesed, His acts of grace, His acts of kindness with us. But we're not describing His greatness. That's not what we're doing here. Why? And he's going to, this is based on a Gemara, Mibnei She'iyev Shalomar, you cannot say that Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim hu Sipur Shvachav Shel Makom. You cannot say that the reciting of the Haggadah is reciting the praises of HaKadosh Baruch You can't say that. It's against the law. I'll tell you why. Mishum Shek Neged Zeh Yeshna Tana there's a famous Gemara that somebody went up to Davin in the Gemara and he started to say, you know, we say in Shemona, say, Kela, Gadola, Gibor, Vanora, and he kept going on and on and on and on. So they stopped him. They threw him off the bima. And they said, you know, Ki yeshna ataina shel sayam tinu lekulu shvachei demarech. They asked him cynically, have you completed all of the praise of HaKadosh Baruch Hu? You, It's endless. We are only allowed to say those Statements of praise that were given to us by the Anshe Neset Hagdola who put the sitter together. Nothing more, nothing less. Leminaya lesaper gvurot hasidi the chutzpah to start praising God. All kinds of words of praise beyond what Chazal, what the the rabbis gave us license to say. 
We're not allowed to do that, right? Which leads to the problem of because you are our source of praise. We actually say that in the Brach of Rufenu. So we'll get to that. Hello, Raklamisha Yashmia Kol Tehilato. It's only only somebody who really understands Hakadosh Baruch Hu's like let's say like Moshe Rabbeinu. He's allowed to do something like this. So now that's the Maral. The Maral points out clearly that Sipur Yitzias Mitzrayim, the Hagodesh Shel Pesach, when we sit at the Seder, we're not giving over the we're not saying over all the shvachim of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We're not, we're not describing him, all of the praise that's due him, right? Can't do that. You're not allowed to do that. Comes along Rav Hutner and he says like this, I want to approach this with fearfulness, with fearfulness, because the maral is the maral, the great maral, the great, uh, the, 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 the rabbi who opened up Machshevet Yisrael to us, and the interesting thing is about the Kisve Maral, I think I might have mentioned it in the past, until about 200 years ago, the Maral was not well known. It was not well known, but it has become, he has become a source of tremendous uh, knowledge in, in Jewish theology and philosophy and Hashkafa. The Maral is the sort of that. So the, the, the Rav Hutner says, I, I'm fearful. The shiny Yitziat Mitzrayim. I want to suggest that, that I want to have another approach which is uh, counter what the Maral says. The shiny Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Yitzhak Mitzrayim, the exodus from Egypt, is different than all other things that we praise God about. The Shapir Yesh the Saperbo, we are allowed to praise him. We are allowed to go overboard and become personal. Afilu al derech shvacho shal even to praise HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Why? The Taina Zu, this this challenge of the Gemara, this warning of the Gemara, the Sayaminu Kulu Shvache Damarech, did you finish all of the praise of Akarish Borhu? Cynically the Gemara says, Nidbara be Gemara be Mashal Lamelech. The Gemara gives a marshal of a king. Shieshlo Klezav. Klezav. He has golden vessels, the king, you know, he's got beautiful, beautiful things. He's got golden vessels. And we praise him about the silver that he has, which is less beautiful than the gold, less valuable than the gold. So that's a chutzpah. We go on and we praise him with silver when he's really all about gold, right? This can only apply to those kalim, those vessels, that the king has amassed for his own personal use. Right, we have no right to pr- praise God on His His beautiful stamp stamp collection, His coin collection, when really He has a a collection of uh, priceless diamonds. Right, that's a chutzpah on our part. It's a, it's a lack of understanding the greatness of the King. But that's only the things that He keeps for His own personal use. Volcain, okay, therefore, Yeshkan Haftacha Kishem Meshabchino Tov Kesef. Therefore. You know, you, you've got a problem when you start praising his silver. That's something different. Let's say he buys silver in order to demonstrate to you, to us, to his people, how who he is and what he's all about. Let's say, you know, he he wants to he create something that is for us, not for himself, not his own personal collections of valuables and jewels and so on. But he creates something in order for us to understand who he is and to praise him, right? Bevadaisha hit pa'arut zu, our fear to ferret, our praise. It, it's a personal thing, right? Let's say it's a painting. Let's say the king prepares a painting. He gets a, a really famous artist and he draws something. You know how art is. Everyone looks at a pi- picture and he sees his own, has his own interpretation, right? Well, if this picture was given to us and put out for us to recognize and understand him, then we have a right, we have a license, to give our personal opinion of praise, right? 
דכך הוא עניינה של מידן ההתפארות, שהיא מ- 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 מכוונת את דרכו לפי מידת השגתו של זה שמתפארים בו. פרייז is a relative thing. I praise somebody, I, this is what I recognize in that person. This is what I recognize in it. This is what I recognize in that painting. To me, the, the, look at the colors. You know what this represents. Yeah, everyone's got their own interpretation. Well, Sibur Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is something, the exodus from Egypt, Yitzhiyat Mitzrayim, the Rabbon, that's the Rabbon Shalom's painting to allow us in the night of Pesach of self-discovery and of HaKadosh Baruch Hu discovery, of our own, right? Every single person has the mitzvah of Sibur Yitzhiyat Mitzrayim. even children. Everybody has a right to say what's on their mind about Yitzhiyat Mitzrayim. V'nimtza she'ein sham ta'ina. There's no, you can't complain, you can't say, this is wrong. Ki ha'tehila lo higia legadel godel ha'yakru. You can't say, well, you're going to say something that doesn't come near what really God is all about. Shebedavar. Shari ha'tvarut lo timtza ela kifi gvul tfisato shel zeh shemitfarim v'ra. Can't say that. Because here we have a license on the Pesach night. Every Jew has a license to speak out, right? To, to say what's on his mind. We encourage children to ask questions. I've always pointed out, why do we, we, why do we take the plate off the Seder, the Seder plate off the, the table right after uh, we sit after Kiddush? We take the Seder plate off and then we bring it back and the child says, why did you do that? Why did you, that's why we did it, so you can ask the question. That's what the Gemara says. We do it so you can ask the question. Does that make sense? What does that mean? What it means is that we want to encourage questioning. The way to raise children is not to tell them this is the way it is, and this is the way it's supposed to be, and that's it. You have to listen to me. But you have a right to question, to, to, to look into things, and you have every right to have your own opinion. That's what Sipur Yitzhiz Mitzrayim is all about. We want to encourage everyone to un- have an understanding of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and to present that personal understanding. That is Sipur Yitzhiz Mitzrayim, the myth of telling over the Exodus. Umemele nimsa, so it comes out, should be Yitzhiz Mitzrayim, the Exodus from Egypt. Asher mefurash nemar aleh b'Torah, where it says in the Torah, in headline letters, ki kol atzma, It's only given over in order to be revealed, to be praised, right? Moshe Amar Leparo, Hitpa'er Alai, V'chein Laman Tisaper Et Asher Hitalalti. You should tell over that, the, 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 how, the games I played with Paro. I played games with Paro, we saw at the beginning of last week's Parsha, right? אין כאן מקום כלל לטיינה שרק למי שמשיג להשמיע כל תהילתו לא נע בכלל כבוד השם, only that one unique individual in a million has a right to add praises. No, when it comes to Yitzhiyat Mitzrayim, each and every one of us has a right to express our opinion about what's going on, about Yitzhiyat Mitzrayim. I think the Haggadah Shal Pesach, there are more book commentaries on the Haggadah Shal Pesach than any other Sefer that we have. Right? Even, even Perushim on, on Chumash, I, w- I would dare say, right? Now, so what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? What does that have to do with the question we started out with? He started out with a question. Only in the bracha, why is it only in the bracha of Rufuenu, where we, we pray to God to heal us, that we say, you are our praise. Why not in any other bracha? Answer, v'hinei, inyan ha The whole idea of God being the Rofei Kolbasar, Huftach Li Yisrael, was promised to us, the Kesher Shal Yitzhiyat Mitzrayim, in, in relationship to the exodus from Egypt. Then he promised us, when we left Mitzrayim, Bom HaMachla Asher Samti B'Mitzrayim, every disease that I placed in Mitzrayim, Lo Asim Alecha, I will not give you. Ki Ani Hashem Rofecha. The idea of the Rabboni Shalom being the Rofe, the praise of him as the Rofe, it has to do with Yitzhiyat Mitzrayim. Therefore, umemei lemosifim, dafka necessarily, bevirchat harafu in the bracha for, for healing, when we ask him for healing and good health, dafka there, hanimuk hamiyuchad, 
We put in, you are our source of praise because it's dafka in, in the Indian, the, the topic of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, where we are, al- not only we have a light, we're allowed to, we're encouraged to praise God. So that statement that we praise him, that extra statement of praise is dafka in the bracha of Rafua because it's a bracha that he gave us. The, his power was revealed to us through the Exodus. This is the way it goes. Anything that has to do with Yitziat Mitzrayim, with the Exodus from Egypt. Everything from the Exodus from Egypt is open territory for us to praise him as much as we want on an individual basis. And that's why it's only in that brach of Rafu, which has to do with Yitziat Mitzrayim. In this idea, this idea has Bahach Milsa Shaamru Khachomim. And I want to add something, and a PS I want to add. I want to add something about this idea that we're free to speak. Pesach, we can say things we can't say any other night, right? Shaamru Khachomim, the Khachomim say Pesach. The word Pesach is notricun for two words. He. Sach, the mouth that speaks. He sach. Mishum de hanisim, the miracles, haotot, the signs, hamoftim, the wonders, shall yitziat mitzrayim, including the promise of his healing power. Heim harishonim, shemefurash nemar lehem, shenasu bol olam rak l'shem hitparut. They're the first that were given to us purposefully that we can praise him. Pesach, we can speak on Pesach. That's it's all about speaking, speaking out. Taas l'chashem keyom azeh u'memela ein kan taina. You can't have a criticism. Im heim ne'amorim begeder shvacho shel makom. If it's praise of God, so be it. We're allowed to do it tonight and only that night. Behind us should be Pesach a Pesach. On Pesach, the mouth speaks. Umishabeach and praises, Lefi Gvult Fisato, according to our understanding, every Ishal Machaneo Ishal Diglo, every single person has an understanding of how Kodesh Borhu works when you read the Haggadah and we have a right to express it. Ve'eno Choshesh, and you don't have to worry, Che Hakilu Shelo, that his praise, Eno Ela Bechle Kesem, that he's only praising him with silver vessels instead of gold vessels that were missing the mark. Venotrikan shall Pesach is Pesach. There's no missing the mark on Pesach. He wants to hear from all of us. Whatever we have to say, even if it's not the golden vessels, but the silver vessels or even less, copper, he doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to him. This is what he wants to hear from us. Okay, over the page. This is number three from Main Simcha Space at Main Beit Hashoeva from Rav Schwab. Uh, at the beginning of the parsha. God doesn't take us directly to Har Sinai. He takes us through the desert. And we were armed when we came out from Eretz Mitzrayim. Now he's going to focus on one aspect here. He quotes Rashi. The Barashi. Chamushim me Chamushim. What does Chamushim mean? From the word chamesh, echad mechamisha yotzu. Only one fifth of the Jewish people came out of Egypt. V'dalit chalakim mesu v'shloshet yemei ha'afelo. Now this is a an incredible statement that Rashi brings. That one fifth went out and four fifths died in Egypt. They weren't worthy of coming out. Umekora v'mechilta. His source is a medrash. The chamushim alu, echad mi chamisha, one in five. V'yesh omrim echad bechamishim. Some say one in fifty. V'yesh omrim echad mi chamesh meot, one in five hundred. That's the medrash. V'vaday shedaver ze tamu meot. This is a a very strange medrash. According to the words of the Medrash, Nimsa Shemetu Karov Lishloshim Milyon, Oshlosh Meot Milyon, Bene Yisrael, Koramagula. 
that 30 million or 300 million Jews died before the Geula from Mitzrayim. Vod Tamua, also hard to, to swallow. Shilakola Deot, Nevdu Kama Milyonim Israel, millions of Jews. Im Kain Hayaze Ason Umaki Gedoli Oter Mikola Makot Shasavlu Mitzrayim. This is worse than all of the ten plagues put together, multiplied by in past years. Now, by the way, this was done during the three days of darkness, so that the Mitzrayim should not see that the sinners of Jew, the Jewish people were killed. Right? That's the Medrash. Now, I offered a few years ago another, a totally different approach um, from uh, from uh, one of the great. Uh, Mekubalim of uh, of Yerushalayim, and I'll I'll just say it over very quickly. And we'll, but I I don't want to I want to come to what he's saying. He's going to say something a lot more practical. But he said like this: If four fifths of the Jewish people were not roy to go out, they were sinners. What about their children? You can't kill the children. They're not bar mitzvah. They're not bat mitzvah. The children didn't do anything wrong, right? So you had to save the children of four fifths of the Jewish people. So that's what it means here, that they came out chamushim. Chamushim means that four-fifths were killed, but the parents, not the children, that every Jew came out, and it said that all the children came out, they, all the families came out with, with, uh, with five children, right? Everybody had five children, right? So it's like Planned Parenthood. How is that possible? So he explains what it means is that it doesn't mean five children. It means five sets of children. They had their own children, and they had four children from those children. Their, their children went out. They, were, they had from the parents who had to die. They took their children. That's one approach. But he's going to say something else, and it's a lot more practical. It's a lot more easier to swallow than to say that there were millions of Jews actually who died in Mitzrayim who sinned. Venera lefaresh davrzeh, opidiv rashi. I'm going to explain this based on a rashi. Al haposuk in Bereshit, the beginning of Bereshit. Paul demei achicha tzoakim alai min adama. God is speaking to Cain, and he's telling him that the the blood of your brother is is speaking to me. You killed your brother. It's speaking to me from the ground. What did you do? Paul demei achicha tzoakim alai. It's yelling to me. Shapir Shukazal, the Gemara in Sanhedrin explains this. Demei achicha. What's the blood of your brother? Damo v'dam. Zariotav. Why does it say in the plural achicha, the bloods of your brother? Because not only did you kill your brother, but the generations, the generations, the millions that will come out, would have come out of Hevel, will not materialize. They won't be in this world. By killing one person, you've killed generations of, of Hevel, right? That's what we have to say here. Shebemet. Lo tu el yechidim. Only a few people died. Only a few people died in the darkness. Shahayu bivnei Yisrael, Tama Rishoyim Gemurim. There were there were some terribly evil Rishoyim amongst the Jewish people. Shelo Ayuruim Legula. They were not fit to go out. There were Jews who didn't want to go out. These Jews were not fit to go out. Vehei Meitu b'shloshet Yemei and they died in the three days of darkness. I am, but if they would have stayed alive. They would have given birth to millions of generations afterwards. And that's what the rabbis in the Medrash are arguing about. Shishim was four times 600,000. O Arbaim Vetishapam, or 49 times 600,000. O Arba Meot Vetishim Vetishapamim, right? Multiples, greater multiples of the 600,000 Jews in Asia. Vitakain Shanechleku Eich Lasot Hacheshben. Okay, they know how to make the Hacheshben. In Mishat Yetziat Mitzrayim, do you start from the beginning of Yetziat Mitzrayim until Binyan Beit Mikdash, until the building of the Beit Mikdash? O Ad Sof Dorot. So there's millions upon millions upon millions. If the rabbis and the medrash are talking about until the building of the Beis HaMikdash, it's a couple of million. If you're talking about until Mashiach comes, going through our generations, you're talking about million times, million times, millions, right? 
This is what he wants to say. It's a very nice, practical understanding of this very difficult medrash that Rashi brings. Finally, he concludes, I'm going to prove it to you. Rashi Rashi says, Rashi says they died during the three days of darkness. Why not any other time? God didn't want the Jewish, the Egyptians to know that Jews died. There were Jews that didn't go out of Egypt. They died and they were buried during the darkness. And the Mitzrim were not aware of their absence, right? However, tell me something. Truth be told. If you're going to add, explain this medrash according to the simple words of the medrash, Sherubam shall b'nei Yisrael meitu ba'oto tukufa millions died. Mitvada iyev shesholoh here gishu amitzrim bechesar and atzum kaze. It's impossible the Egyptians wouldn't have heard about it, and, and also they could never have buried them all in time. Ela davar baru kamosh pirushin. My pirush makes absolute sense. Shebe'emet rak yechidi meitu. Only a few individuals died. And it wasn't felt, the enormous loss from Klal Yisrael. Let me give you an example. If the cursed Nazis, Yemach Shamam, Horgu Shisha Milyonim, Meachenu Benet Yisrael, they killed six million Jews. Lifnei, 50 years, Lifnei Nun Shana, now it's not Nunshan, it's 70, 80 years. What? Hine Ayom. Today, under Yechol and Lomar, we could say today, Shehorgo Asarat Milyonim, they killed 10 million, tens of millions of Jews. Shahari bin Meshech, Achamishim Shanar, for us now, 70 or 80 years since then, since the Holocaust. Achronim, Ayukol and Nehargrim, Verabim, Bibanim, Ubene Banim. They would have had children and grandchildren. The Thain Bishanim Habaot. In the years yet to come, the Kedoshim who died in the Holocaust will continue to increase, would have continued to increase. Their blood and the blood of their children. And God will revenge. And and we can say that about what we're going through right now, too, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu should bring out the Chalalim, the Chayalim, at the end of this miserable Milchama, and the Rishoyim should get their due. Okay, one last piece I have here, and then I might say just something quickly about Tu Bishvat, which is coming up on Thursday. Vayi Bishalach Paro, also from Rav Hutner, a very short piece. Vayi Bishalach Paro, Paro sent us out. Now this is also at the end of this is all at the end of Sipri Tzis Mitzrayim. Now Paro is going to send us out. It's all the whole story is out. As the only thing left is the the Red Sea. The Az Yashir, Ach Rak Az Nizkar Inyan Lekichad Atzmot Yosef. The next few psukim tell us that now Moshe took out the remains of Yosef Atzadik with him. Now why is that mentioned now? They took them out. We, they were taken out on the on the fifteenth, the night of the fifteenth, the Seder night. The bones were taken out, and also the bones of all the shvat But why is it mentioned here and not when we went out after you know Bishal of Paro? When Paro threw us out, then we say we took out the bones of Moshe. But it was already we started already before Bishal of Paro. Mikomakom. That we stand not not lo nit parisha davar bekra. It's only mentioned in the pasuk ad ad la achar sipur yitzim until the whole story of the Exodus is, is over. Ad la parshat redifat paro achar Yisrael. Only when Paro was chasing us out, we were Moshe was going. We were going with the bones of the remains of Yosef at Sadik also. Afal pisha ein kan sheela mi pekinat hazman. We're not talking about a timeline here. When he sent us out, it was the night of the 15th. We're asking at the order of the Psukim. It should have been mentioned earlier. Why Dafk is the, the taking of Yosef with us now when Paro is sending us out? And why isn't it mentioned earlier? So he says like this Who is Yosef? What was Yosef? 
Vayinira Lomar, let me suggest the Parshat Vayibishalach Paro, this idea, this Parsha, Paro sending us out. Od Morel Ef Sharut Shel Chazor LeMitzrayim. It also smacks of this in this Parsha that we could return to Mitzrayim. Right? God, Dafka took us out this way so we wouldn't return to Mitzrayim. We wouldn't be afraid and come back to Mitzrayim. The proof is they chased them after, they chased after them. Paro and they chased after to bring us back. The calls man, says this in Yiddish, as Paro is noch amachutin, in Paro, relationship with him, he's still coming after us, he wants to take us back, right? Bishalach uh, loshen shiluach im levaya. Right, he said he took us out, but he wants us back. Od srichim shmira. We need additional protection now that he won't take us back into Mitzrayim. Miha shayachut im paro. The relationship that we have with paro, we've had with him for so many years, and we still have with him to be under his gun that we shouldn't come back. We need protection that he won't take us back. Kedvar of shalom aral quotes the maral again. The biuro. Why did Yosef go to Mitzrayim? Because of who Yosef was. Yosef was was a tzaddik. Even as as the viceroy in Egypt, he remained steadfast with Torah. So he's mentioned now because it's only in his schut. Because it was only on his schut. We, we needed this extra shmir of Yosef to keep us out of Mitzrayim. Yosef was the one who saved us from, be, from spiritual annihilation while we were in Mitzrayim. So he's got to be the one to save us not, from not going back. You know, I, I've mentioned many years ago, I think, that um, uh, Rav, Rav Yosef Dovid, uh, Rav David Yosef Sinsheim was the head of Napoleon's Sanhedrin. You heard of Napoleon's Sanhedrin? Napoleon had an idea to make a synod of Jews. He made a Sanhedrin of the Jewish people, and he appointed a rabbi and head of the head of the Sanhedrin. He was the Rabbi Yosef David Sinsheim. And you would think, you know, such a rabbi is like, you know, he's not a he's a kind of not a not a Talmud Chacham. He's appointed by Napoleon, right? You'd have the idea. That maybe he was not such a special person, Napoleon, Napoleon's rabbi. So when he died, the Chassam Sofer, the Chassam Sofer eulogized him, and it was on, I, I think, Parshat Vayigash, and in the Parsha there it says that make sure, make sure you tell my father when you go back to him that I'm the president in Egypt, right? Make sure he knows that what I'm doing, right? So he asked a question. He asked a question of some. So it's in his drushes. This is what Yosef was concerned to tell his father. You know, my father today. I'm not, you know, every Jewish father wants his son to be a doctor, president of the United States. You know the old joke, right? So uh, that's what he meant. So no, no, no. Says says some so What he wanted to tell him was this: Ani Yosef, right? I am Yosef, and I'm the money in, in Mitzrayim, but I'm still Yosef, even though, even though. I am the viceroy. I'm running in Egypt, this, this terrible place called Mitzrayim, Ani Yosef. I, am, I maintain my tzitkut. I maintain my tzitkus and my commitment to you and to the, to the Torah. So uh, that's that's what Yosef was all about. That's why he was sent to Egypt to take us out, to sep- keep us separate from Egypt. And in the end, it was, he was, it was necessary to have his presence to keep us from going back. Okay, just um, a minute or two on Tu Bishvat, which is coming up on Thursday. Uh, just about the only thing that we do ritually on on uh, for the men that we do on Tishvav is on on Tu Bishvat. Is we don't say Tachanun. This it comes out on a Thursday, so it's a bit of a bonus. We don't say Tachanun, but we know that it's the New Year of Peros, right? Rosh Hashanah Lanot, the New Year of Trees, the New Year of Fruit. So. It, it's interesting that when you, if you look at secular Zionism, there was tremendous celebration of the three, um, the Shalash Regalim, from a from a, a harvest perspective, from a natural, from an Eretz Yisrael perspective, which is all true. It's a time where we celebrate the first fruits, but it's such a so much deeper than that. Why are we celebrating fruits? Why do we celebrate the Rosh Hashanah for vegetables? 
right? It's a different time of the year. For vet. Why Rosh Hashanah for, for Eirot? What's unique about fruit? What's the difference between fruit and vegetables? So let me go back to the Maral. And he says like this. What's a uh, fruit is human food. Vegetables, vegetables, classic and classical literature, vegetables is animal food, right? When Adam sinned, when Adam Arishan sinned, and what did HaKadosh Baruch Hu tell him? You're going to have to eat vegetables. That was his, that was his punishment. So what did he say? So the Gemara says that Adam Arishan said to Moshe, Ani v'chamori no chal mi avus achat? You mean me and my donkey are going to eat from the same trough? Right? Vegetables, that's animal food. Why is that so? Behema is ba ma. Beit he mem he is ba ma. What you see is what you get. That's what an animal is. Ba ma. A behema is, it, it's born, it eats, it sleeps, it procreates, and it dies. What you see is what you get. Adam is me Adama. Man is from the Adama. It's not what you what you see, it's what you become. A pre. It's it's the tree. It's not about the tree, it's about its its fruit. When you get a vegetable, you have to reach down to the ground, to take a vegetable. Not only that, vegetables are machalya karna. You have to replant them every year. A fruit you have to reach upward to get a fruit from the tree. And not only that, but it rejuvenates every year, it regrows, right? That's what a pre represents. It represents the spirituality of Claudius who are reaching up to the Rabboni film. That's what the fruit represents. It represents our relationship to HaKadosh Baruch Hu on a higher plane, beyond our things, right? That's Tu B'Shvat. That's the Rosh Hashanah of Ilanot, to recognize that we are a higher being with a higher purpose. By the way, there's a special prayer for an esrug on Tu Bishvat. If you pray hard enough, you'll get a very good esrug on Tu Bishvat. Okay, there's a mitzvah to eat the peyrot of Eretz Yisrael. There's a mitzvah to eat a new peyri and to say Shechianu. But I just want to warn you about the brach of Shechianu. I remember as a kid when we were in school, they would give us a bag of fruit, and there was boxer. The boxer was hard like a piece of cardboard. And the team told me, you have to make a bracha of Shechianu on this. You don't make a, that's not, that's not the, the carob tree, you get it when it's green, and then you make a bracha. Shechianu can only be said if you really enjoy what you're eating, right? If you don't enjoy it, you don't make the Shechianu. So you have to make sure you're getting a new fruit that you have not had yet, and it's something you enjoy, right? And therefore, you, then you make a Shechianu, okay? Everyone should find their Shechianu this Thursday, okay? Have a wonderful week, everybody. And there's no Halacha Shir this Wednesday because of Tu B'Shvat. There are programs going on in the shuls here in both the McDonald's and the Young Israel and Netanya. So we'll see you next Monday for Parsha.